Welcome back. UAE gold trade in 2011 was worth 56 billion US dollars, an increase of 1,110% since the Dubai Multi Commodities Center's inception. And the authority continues to raise competition through a number of avenues to enhance Dubai's position as a major gold hub. Day two of the inaugural Dubai Precious Metals Conference 2012 was held in Al Mas Tower today to focus on some of the main trends and challenges within the precious metals markets. Some of the topics included the DMCC's recent involvement in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development's guidelines that ensures ethical and responsible trading of precious metals to promote the gold market in the Emirate. In addition, Speaker Gerard Schubert, the head of precious metals at Emirates NBD, stated that India and Turkey are the main markets for Dubai. However, China is still a market that needs to be addressed. He added that the cost for manufacturing jewellery and gold bars has also increased trust in Dubai's gold industry. The DMCC Executive Chairman Ahmed bin Sulaim told us about the sector's progress. As you've seen recently, there there has been uh, changes in the uh, metals uh, industry. A lot of the gold uh, traders and investment uh, within that sector are looking to interact, uh, respond to the uh, uh, new setting of the gold rates. But what this conference is more focused on, uh, more than trends, is basically uh, raising the competitiveness of uh, uh, Dubai uh, within the region. There are some areas where uh, uh, Dubai can work on uh, to uh, to be uh, to raise its competitiveness. Uh, one of the examples is the uh, supporting the OECD uh, guidelines. Uh, this is really more to attract more international uh, institutes within the precious metals industry. We have a lot going for. Uh, uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi and, and the whole of UAE. It's a progressing and a developing uh, country. We're pushing very hard, whether it be construction, whether it be uh, guidelines, whether, whether it be, and you know one, one of the key uh, initiatives that we brought to the market in 2005 was the Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange, which is uh, growing in itself with the launch of gold, silver, and currency pairs, and more, most recently the copper futures. As the fastest growing gold center in the world and one of the largest physical redistributors of gold, with more than 130 countries serving as import partners, Dubai connects trade flows to and from the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, Europe and Africa, and imports an average of 300 tonnes of gold annually. So what's next for Islamic banking? According to global management consultancy A.T. Kearney, it's now time for Islamic banks to tackle slowing growth rates and eroding profitability. Traditionally, Islamic banks have outperformed their conventional peers in most markets. However, a closer look suggests the market dynamics are changing. A.T. Kearney says this to sustain profitable growth, Islamic banks need to seek greater efficiency across the value chain and market gaps to better meet Muslim-specific client needs with dedicated banking products. These market opportunities are underdeveloped and present attractive platforms for profitable growth, according to Dr. Alexander von Pock, principal at A.T. Kearney Middle East. The consultancy firm identifies sales effectiveness, operational efficiency and performance management as key target improvement areas for banks to maximise impact on the bottom lines. And there were more Q1 results released with Dubai Islamic Bank announcing a first quarter net profit of 245 million dirhams, up 11% year on year. Total revenue stood at 1.23 billion dirhams, while total assets stood at 92.5 billion dirhams. And DP World has revealed that they saw a 9.5% increase in gross volumes across their global portfolio of marine terminals for the quarter, handling 13.8 million 20-foot equivalent units. So with that, let's now look at the stock indices across the GCC.
In other news, the US dollar weakened across the board this past week as the headline event, the Federal Open Market Committee rate decision, kept the door open for additional measures to kickstart a stumbling recovery. Much of the trading this week will hinge on the US non-farm payroll report. We earlier spoke with Gaurav Kashyap, head of DGCX desk at the Alpari Middle East, to get his views on the upcoming week. Much of the trading last week was in anticipation and expectation of what the FOMC had plans for with additional easing measures in the U.S. And all of a sudden we saw the U.S. dollar weaken very tremendously across the board after the FOMC said that they would keep uh, additional QE measures on the, on the table uh, and the, by the fact that they would be prepared to do more. Uh, looking at trading this week, once again, sentiment will be moved on additional easing measure possibilities from the U.S., uh, this will be capped off by Friday's non-farm payroll numbers. Now remember we did see a weaker jobs report in last month's report of 120,000 new jobs. Uh, the expectations for this month's report are new jobs added of around 170,000 uh, 170, new jobs. Now any downbeat uh, figure from the expectations will definitely see the US dollar weaken across the board, whereas on the flip side any figure between 170 and maybe 2 to 210, the average of the, over the past four months, we'll see the dollar get reinvigorated as a result of the lack of QE measure expectations coming forward. Uh, we also have the rate decisions from the Reserve Bank of Australia uh, on Tuesday. They are very likely to be cutting their rates by 25 basis points to 4%. This should see a tremendous weakening effect on the Australian dollar. Uh, once again, the Reserve Bank of Australia is faced by slowing inflation. We saw the latest year-on-year -year figures dropping to 1.6, down from 3.1% previously, and they have slowing um, growth, which is below the trend. Uh, we wrap off the week with uh, Thursday's ECB rate decision, which is expected unchanged at 1%. We continue to watch the performance of the Euro GBP with an expected lower closing on the week.